What is the illusion of separation? What creates the illusion of separation? How does perception affect the illusion of separation? How does projection affect perception? How is knowledge different from perception? Are we separate or are we one? Welcome to Love Always Self. I'm Shira. Hi, y'all. I'm Karista. And thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Love Always Self. Today, we are discussing the illusion of separation. And I just wanted to give a quick introduction as to why. So this morning, I was having a little bit of quiet time and decided to crack open a new book that I had bought myself. The book is Spirit Junkie by Gabrielle Bernstein. And I maybe got through part of the first chapter. So I read the preface and partway into the first chapter. And initially I had listened to this woman as a guest on a podcast a year ago, which made me interested in this book. And as I started reading this book, she was explaining that part of her soul journey began with the discovery of A Course in Miracles. Some of you may have heard of this book. It's something that I've had on my bookshelves for several years and have not really opened it much. I knew that I was curious about it. And even in my bachelor's degree program, there is a class on it. So I know that at some point I was going to open it. Well, this morning was that day. And truly because of this book by Gabrielle Bernstein that I decided to open this. And upon opening, one of the first words that caught my attention was perception and this illusion of separation. I only got through the preface, so it's a big book. And as I read the preface, I found a section that I felt pertinent to bring to the table as far as a topic. So I'm going to go ahead and read a small portion of the preface of A Course in Miracles. I am reading from the second edition, and this was published by Foundation for Inner Peace. Knowledge is truth. Truth is unalterable, eternal, and unambiguous. It can be unrecognized, but it cannot be changed. It has no opposite, no beginning, and no end. It merely is. The world of perception, on the other hand, is the world of time, of change, of beginnings and endings. It is based on interpretation, not on facts. It is the world of birth and death, founded on the belief of scarcity, loss, separation, and death. It is learned rather than given, selective in its perceptual emphasis, unstable in its functioning, and inaccurate in its interpretations. In the realm of knowledge, no thoughts exist apart from God, because God and his creation share one will. The world of perception, however, is made by the belief in opposites and separate wills, in perpetual conflict with each other and with God. What perception sees and hears appears to be real because it permits into awareness only what conforms to the wishes of the perceiver. This leads to a world of illusions, a world which needs constant defense precisely because it is not real. When you have been caught in the world of perception, you are caught in a dream. You cannot escape without help because everything your senses show merely witnesses to the reality of the dream. It is the Holy Spirit's goal to help us escape from the dream world by teaching us how to reverse our thinking and unlearn our mistakes. The world we see merely reflects our own internal frame of reference, the dominant ideas, wishes, and emotions in our minds. Projection makes perception. We look inside first, decide the kind of world we want to see, and then project that world outside making it the truth as we see it. We make it true by our interpretations of what it is we are seeing. If we are using perception to justify our own mistakes, our anger, our impulses to attack, our lack of love in whatever form it may take, we will see a world of evil, destruction, malice, envy, and despair. All this we must learn to forgive, not because we are being good and charitable, but because we are seeing what we are seeing is not true. We have distorted the world by our twisted defenses and therefore seeing what is not there. Wow. Now it goes on. There's a lot more. Some more things that I've underlined. Again, that was just the preface. 
And in reading that to Shira earlier, so this <laughs> is the second time I've read this aloud this morning, Shira, you started buzzing. Yeah. And I'm feeling rocking. like <laughs> Mount Glass is coming through and has some information to expand upon in relation to this illusion of separation and the ideas of perceptions. So the first thing they have said to me is that it is by no coincidence that you were in the path of receiving information at the time that you received it and that you had already obtained that book. It's not a coincidence that you have been brought back to something in which you've already owned, but are just now taking part into diving into is what they just, they just said. I don't know if I believe in coincidences anyways, just synchronicities and divine timing. Right. They're also pointing to my thought process this morning and they're relating it to being more of a fed information as in, so something Carrie and I talked about earlier this morning was when she was approaching me with the topic that she wanted to talk about today, I kind of had the big eyes moment, right? And I was like, what the heck? Because I had written down going over perspectives. Mm. (laughs) So just another one of those like lovely synchronicities. (laughs) (laughs) And so we are very much so guided by our teams that are working together to bring about this topic for those that come across this information and listen to it to gather those that are looking to shift their perspectives or perceptions of what is going on around them to bring about the changes, to bring about movement towards the love and the light. Uh, So many of us are in a, they're using the word distraught, or that might be just my filter, distraught type state that is causing conflict within. And it is the state that you are within That changes your environment around you, which is why we, saying we, I'm just repeating, which is why we continue to have conversations around consciousness and your perspectives and bringing about yourself towards a more neutral state. Example, when you are focusing your perception, your perspectives on all of the terrible things that are happening in the world, and again, we say this in the sense of not to ignore all the things that are happening around you. When you are looking things up, let's say you decide to focus on war, fighting, politics, indiscretions, and you go onto your technical devices and you start to scroll and you start to search keywords and you consume and you consume and you consume all of these things. Now what is in front of you is this, all of the situations in which you are seeking, focusing on, deciding to have different perspectives. And you are building a story within your head and you're building a solution. But your solution or your resolve may not be tied to just the thoughts that are within, the feelings that are within. It could also be tied to the thoughts of others, to the collective. And if the collective is shifted towards something more polarizing than where you want to be, you may start to feel discourse. You may feel sadness, anger, depression. You feel like the weight of the world and all the problems in which you're trying to solve cannot be solved by just you. Then you have others who decide that when they get on their technical devices, they are choosing to search for love and joy and happiness and jokes and laughter. And then you scroll away and you search And you're bringing about this emotion of peace and satisfaction and happiness and joy and love. And then all of a sudden, all the things around you are only perceived as that. Your mood is lighter. You feel lighter. You feel relaxed. You feel joyful. You feel playful. You want to go out and do things that make you happy for the day. This is what we mean by your perceptions, your perspectives. But it starts with your choice, which you all have. You all have a choice in every action, every moment, every emotion, every thought, every perception. That's what they wanted to say. So why do we need to experience the illusion of separation? What is it that you wish to experience? It all brings back to the experiences. It all brings back to the illusion. (laughs) That's weird. (laughs) Well, okay. So even when I asked that question out loud, my first internal response was even that's a choice. Mm Mm-hmm. 
experiencing the illusion of separation. So I asked, why do we need to? We don't need to. Right. It's a choice. Are we always aware of that choice being made? No. But once we are aware, we can start making conscious choices. You ever have one of those aha moments where you are in a situation and at the time you're in the situation and you're not thinking of the focus from different angles, right? So we've talked about that before and Mount Glass has given us that before where per se you're looking at like a prism and how you see something in one from one angle versus how you see it from another could be different, right? Based on the reflection and the angle and where it's at, but it's still the same object. You're still looking at the same thing. You're just seeing it from different angles. When you're in certain situations, experiences, whatever, you're not usually laser focused on that one angle, right? You're hyper-focused on that one angle. There are many of us that will quickly decide within themselves all the different perspectives that are happening around them before responding, right? Sometimes your emotions get to the best of you. That's neither good nor bad. And when we're in this state of looking at it from different angles, when we're looking at it from different perspectives, you are able to make a decision a little bit easier than how maybe you would have when you were only looking at it from the mirror directly in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. So oftentimes after said experience, after said situation has occurred, you've had time to process and think about the different perspectives around you or perceptions that are probable. And then you come back to yourself within and you have a moment of aha. Now, there are so many things in my opinion that can intervene in that, right? You have the history of yourself, which involves your beliefs. As an example, I believe that chocolate ice cream is the only and the best flavor that there ever is. So I believe that chocolate ice cream is the best and that's the only flavor that there is and that's the best that could ever be. That's my belief based on my own personal experiences. And then somebody with me is saying, no way, dude, vanilla is the best flavor that there is. And you're like, I'm going to argue this. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. Here's how you're going to now be on my side of the perspective, right? And we're going to have this like battle, this conflict back and forth on which flavor of the ice cream is best. Is it going to be the vanilla? Is it going to be the chocolate, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The other perspective is, well, what if you mix both of them? And did you think about that? Was that an option? Have you ever tried it? And then somebody else's perspective might come into the situation or intervene and say, well, what about coffee flavored ice cream? And now you're in what I'm going to call a helpful guide to understanding the difference between only the thought process that you're having towards just this one very poignant topic versus have I thought about have I experienced any of the other sides of this prism? And this happens all the time. These are the aha moments, right? What if you took those two flavors and you mixed them together and you took a bite and you're like, oh my God, that's way better than the chocolate by itself, <laughs> right? <Yeah>. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so these are just a little example it's, there. So our perceptions are made from our projections, which are influenced by our senses. Senses being the physical ability to sense things outside of ourselves. Our senses, what they perceive is still limited. So they're not sharing full truths. And when I say a truth, I'm going to reference back to this idea that truth is unchangeable, that it just is. And so how can we rely on our senses when they're limited and cannot experience the full breadth of our being outside of our physical self. So this whole idea of the illusion of separation is we believe that we are individuals, a single organism, right? We're not going to go into the biology of that. I know that each body <laughs> is made of billions and billions of billions of organisms. Okay. We're just going to, we're just rolling with it. Go. We're, we're acknowledging <laughs> that we're going to switch to the side. We're rolling with, I am one and you are two. You are another. And our physical senses perceive that separateness because I see your body over there and I know my body is over here. But what we're not perceiving 
is anything beyond what our physical senses can receive. For example, bats. Bats? They can, bats. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like vampire, you know. <laughs> I thought you said baths at first and yeah. I was like, B-A-T-S. I took one yesterday, okay? <laughs> <laughs> they can sense using sonar. That's not how we sense. You know, people say blind is a bat. I, again, I'm not sure if this is 100% accurate. More things may have been discovered since eighth grade biology. <laughs> but I'm going to go with what I, I remember. <laughs> You've heard the term, they're blind as a bat. So they have a hard time seeing with their physical eyes. But they can sense using their ears and how sound bounces off of other solid objects. And that's how they navigate and can find the insects and live. Mm -hmm. We don't perceive that. I think that'd be pretty, pretty overwhelming if I closed my eyes and I could sense all the sounds bouncing off the buildings. Yeah. So our senses are helpful to us in trying to keep us from being overwhelmed, but they also are limited in that we only have this taste, sight, smell, hearing, feeling, right? We will not argue about psychic reception. We're not, we're going to set that one aside too. (laughs) (laughs) When you were, go ahead. When you were explaining the bats, they were saying purposefully designed that way. Yes. 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 And so again, even though our senses are limiting information, thus not giving us whole truths, So we could say that they're lying to us. It's not inherently bad. They're again, trying to allow us to be able to move through this life without being completely overwhelmed and incapacitated by all the environmental input. Again, we're not able to perceive what's beyond this physical sensing body. Right. There's an argument that with practicing those more intuitive skills, those additional senses, we start recognizing that this physical body is an illusion that helps to create that idea of separation. We've talked about before the collective consciousness that is beyond this veil, this illusion. It is something that we cannot perceive with our limited senses. And yet it affects everything around us. Mm -hmm. And some of us say, I just have a knowing that it is an additional sensory perception. We are connecting to what is beyond us in our physical limited bodies. And when we fall victim to this idea of separation, we have trouble trusting and finding joy. And it's easier to travel down the path of fear because fear and separation go hand in hand. Love and unity go hand in hand. And when we start to recognize that fear is what is driving us, we can start to change our course. We can become aware and conscious of our projections, creating our perceptions, thus creating the reality that we live in, recognizing that we can change it. Right. We have a choice. We have a choice. So in my head at the moment, I keep getting this sense of let go, letting go of all of those things that you've had in your experience thus far that has caused you to believe that you are without and it's brought about fear and it's that separation from the thing of love right so that illusion of separation from love just so we're clear Mm -hmm. we're made up of the stuff can't get rid of it because of that can you just decide one day you just wake up and this is just a hypothetical but roll with me for here can you just decide one day that you wake up and you're like you know what that thing doesn't serve me anymore I'm just going to decide that this thing that has caused me pain, this thing that has caused me hurt, sadness, fear, because they all work together, (laughs) I'm just going to let it go. I'm not going to allow it to be in my existence anymore. What does your day look like from that point forward? What decisions do you make just from letting that one thing go? It's like allowing somebody in traffic cutting you off to derail your entire day you know, becoming upset with that, which I've done. Yeah. She uh, knows she's been in the car, (laughs) (laughs) but in that moment, recognizing that we have that choice and remembering that forgiveness is a tool, not because you're trying to be charitable or anything like that, but you are removing that anger, that separation with forgiveness and moving towards love. I had a visual while you were, I don't remember, sorry, I don't remember what you were talking about, but I got a visual first of the prism. When you were talking about the prism, Mm -hmm. 
with the prism, I'm seeing us holding it in our hand and having that awareness to move it and look at it from different sides. But sometimes we don't have that awareness. We assume that we've seen all sides. Right. Don't let this be the iceberg that sinks your ship. Just because you think you see all of it, recognizing that 70% of it is below the surface that is unseen. So I got this visual. It was like a little story in my head of a man walking down a road and there's a big boulder that's in the way and it's lodged in the rocks and he's like trying to push it. And this is a troublesome rock. It is in his way. It is causing him so much discourse because he can't pass with his horse and cart again. This is just like a little visual story in my head. (laughs) And he is like trying to pound at the rock, trying to push it, trying to like get his horse to haul it out of the way. And he's like, I can't get through and I have to get to the market and sell what's in my cart or else I'm not going to be able to live. And he is just like angry at this boulder. He's hateful and just distraught with fear, anger, resentment. And then at one point, this boulder starts to move and he's able to shift it. And all of a sudden he realizes that this boulder was so much bigger than he anticipated because it was covered up by all this ground to the side, this hillside. But as the rock removed itself from the ground, the beauty of the crystal inside was found and he realized he could use this. And this was actually something to help him yeah. flourish. And so not being able to see everything that is hidden underneath, reminding ourselves to trust that what we experience, even though it doesn't always feel good, is for our greatest and highest good. Sorry, this is a little tangent off of the illusion of separation. No, because it was in your example, what Mount Glass is saying right now is that he was never meant to move the rock. He was meant to move through it. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Mount Glass, for clarifying that lesson. (laughs) (laughs) So again, projection makes perception. I just wanted to go into this a little bit. So projections are what we have learned inside of us and the stories that we tell ourselves. And we project that out onto the world. And then our mind, our ego finds everything that aligns with that projection. So it makes that story true true air quotes air quotes <laughs> so we create our own story and i know that we've said this times before we are the creators of our own reality yep so what are you creating in this reality what is continuing to support your ideas of this illusion of separation if you're ready dive deeper into that that goes that goes deeper into the childhood these things that we've experienced around us Yep. That feed into the fear. That feeds call it into- inner inner child yeah. healing for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Inner inner child work. And then how do you want to experience the world going forward? Do you want to experience love and peace and harmony? How do we remove this veil of separation? Mount Glass, I'm asking you. They just keep saying it starts with you individually. It starts within. It is the spread of every individual working towards knowing their true self and their true self is the base of love. So by going within, by literally loving self, you start to spread that one at a time. It is not a battle and it shouldn't be perceived as a battle, but it is up to you to perceive that or not. That is neither good nor bad. That's how they just said it. It's neither good nor bad. So... This idea that we come into the world as we are, closest to God or spirit or Mount Glass at that point, coming into this world, naked little baby. <laughs> and sorry, this is this is the visual that I got. Naked little baby. We come into this world and we start experiencing fear, anger. Sure, our parents, I'm sure many of them try to protect us from that. But we can experience the energetic exchange of our parents. And when we feel their anger towards each other in an argument, this is where 
we start interpreting fear right. and separation. And so as a naked little baby, we, st- we experience that first level of fear and we put on a piece of clothing to protect ourselves. And then as we move throughout our life, we continue to don more clothes, some gloves, a hat, looking for that comfort of that original connection with source, not realizing that everything that we are covering ourselves with is a projection of these initial stories that we're telling ourselves and are experiencing. So some of that inner child work is about removing those layers and finding your true self, that beginning point, that point closest connected to source. I think a majority of our fear is is built upon this remembrance of this like little nudge somewhere in the back of your mind, right? That remembers who you truly are. And there's a miss. It feels like a miss, right? Mm-hmm. Like I miss that so much. Mm-hmm. During a very angelic channeling, I, in my experience of that channeling, I got to experience seeing grandparents that have passed and them just passing on messages for me to send back to my mom or to just check on her. But the love that I felt in that realm was so much more, I I don't want to call it intense because I don't, you know, sometimes it has like a negative connotation to it, but it was so much more (laughs) than what you experience here, honestly. So I always have this little miss, right? This little thought of like, I just want to experience that again. Mm -hmm. I want to feel that again, even if it's for a second. And we come from that place. That's where we come from. So if you could only imagine if somebody's not aware, they haven't learned, because I believe we can all do this, what I do, that you haven't learned how to tap back into that. What what becomes is the exact opposite because you're missing this thing, this one feeling, this one place. It becomes this polarity. Now, when we come here, and this is what I believe, because this is what Mountain Class has told me, and this is the visuals that I get. So I'm just going to, it's all through my filter, use your own discernment, take it or leave it. But what I feel and what I've seen and what I believe is that we came here and we made a choice. We made a choice on the parents and the dynamic and the location and everything that we were going to experience as a baby. I'm not saying that our entire life was mapped out for us. It's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that we understood the circumstances in which we were going to be raised because we had a choice to make. What decisions were we going to make in the experiences that we came here to have? Are we going to choose the light and the love? Are we going to choose the hatred and the anger and the fear? Can we find a neutral place in that knowing that we're in a third dimensional reality and there is going to always be polarity here? That's a perspective yeah, for no, you to ponder no. on. <laughs> it's it's going to take, I'm going to need some time to ponder on that a little deeper. One one thing that I wrote down, and I already shared this with you, Shara, but I wanted to share just some additional insight after reading that preface. <laughs> <laughs> full circle. Full circle. <laughs> yeah. So, and I already mentioned a little bit of this, but when we are born, we are closest to source, much like the moments before we die. Similarly, we are transitioning from one realm to another. Perceptually, these experiences are quite different to us as physical beings, one solely appearing to enter this world full of life, while the other appearing to exit with no life remaining. Again, it is simply a transition. However, death is perceived as a loss because we can no longer perceive a person with our physical senses. Our physical senses lie by limiting our reception of truth. This is not inherently bad, but rather a defense mechanism to filter out what our mind has learned as lacking importance or filters out what we deem as false or not in alignment with our beliefs. And because if we allowed all the information from both our internal and external environments, we too would be overwhelmed with information to even attempt to live. The reason I wanted to bring this back up is because this this trigger warning, I'm going to talk about passing on. This idea of when our bodies die, we are gone. I don't believe that anymore. What I have faith in is that our physical bodies cannot sustain forever, but our souls do because our souls are made of energy and energy never dies. It simply transforms. Death is a form of transformation. And again, It does not separate us from others that have passed on, but rather creates a new opportunity 
to create relationships beyond the physical world. I know that this will not save me. This belief will not save me from mourning, but it will help me heal and continue to build my relationships beyond the physical limitations of this life, thus removing the veil of separation. Well said. Thank you, babe. Beautiful, beautiful. I would love to hear other people's thoughts on this. Again, this is just something that came into my awareness this morning. You got an intuitive hit this morning as well. That is not uncommon for us to have similar thoughts throughout the day. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I, I think this idea of separation, what is it? This, this saying that, uh, divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. It is easier to hold power over individuals if they believe that they are divided and they are separate and they are powerless, but together united we stand. And what is the ultimate freaking test of your, that felt like a political speech, dude, for real. (laughs) Bye. <laughs> World peace. <laughs> Miss America. <laughs> we started off silly you. this morning. I think it's going to continue through the rest of our day. So see, that's the, that's the perspective we're going to roll with. <laughs> I will welcome that in with open arms. I think I feel like I cut you off. I don't remember what I was going to say. It's totally okay. cool. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Thank you everyone so much for joining us on this episode today. We wanted to really dive into this topic and clearly our Mount Glass teams have been working and conspiring together to make sure we talked about it today. So that was very obvious. If you are enjoying our content, please don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, follow, hit that notification bell if you're on listening to us or watching us on YouTube. We are trying to up our ante on our (laughs) YouTube channel to make it more entertaining for you to watch these videos. I will also mention the books below in the show notes. I've listed out the books that were mentioned in this episode. If you're interested in purchasing them, they are on our website, on our Amazon shop. You can just go through there and find the books that you want. And we've got all of our lists there. So you can check out our website at lovealwaysself.com. And of course, as promised, we have decided that at the end of each of our episodes, we are going to do a collective reading for all. Today, we're going to use the Light Seer's Tarot, a 78 card deck and guidebook by Chris Ann. And I'll just put it on the screen right quick. I love this deck. It's so beautiful. Look at the inside of that box. And of course, you can find this on our website, lovealwaysself.com. All right. First, I think that not only was channeling (laughs) brings a lot of energy into the room, Mm -hmm. but we also had kind of a lengthy episode this time and we gave you a lot of information to ponder on. So we're going to stick with just three cards. They tried to jump like 20 out at me and I was like, skirt, that's not happening. We're going back y'all. Just give me three (laughs) three main hits. I love that. She actually said no. No, no, not today. today. (laughs) Yeah. See, that's that, that choice that we have, right? Yeah. Now, (laughs) <laughs> because I'm not an aficionado, if that's even a word, of tarot books or tarot cards, I do use the book to help me with that. And of course, I always use imagery on the cards and the feeling and, and the information that comes through. So the first card that shows up is Ten of Pentacles. And I'll just put that on the screen right quick. Can you see it? There you go. Come on, camera. You want to? So I see large circle at the top that looks very much like a stained window, but it has the Kabbalah tree, I believe, the tree of life. I think that's what that's referencing. And then there are several Metatron's children. Cube, isn't it? What is that? Is that Metatron's cube right there? That might be. Yeah. But I think it's also, I don't know why I keep relating it to the Kabbalah in the Jewish tradition. I may be confused on that. But anyways, Several children are playing in the background, and then it looks like an adult male, an adult female holding another child's hands, and a little yellow golden retriever laying down and hanging out at the front of the card. That's so this this feels very playful to me, mm-hmm. very family-oriented, very, ah, unifying, speaks yeah. of unity to me. You're going to laugh at the last card then. So not at, but with. Yeah. (laughs) So I'll give you out of the book again, comes a little handy dandy Mm -hmm. book. Clearly I use it. 
<laughs> and I'll give you the light seer. Some people play in the with their tarot as far as like, what does it mean if it's upside down versus right side up? So if you're one of those listening and you do that, and that's how you like to take it, I choose to stay in the light side of it. Although when I did draw the cards, they all were all upright, just in case you wanted to go down that route. So spiritual and material abundance, community, generosity, wealth, and prosperity, building a legacy. Oh, I love that because building a legacy, it so often we think about individualized, like mm -hmm. this is my family's legacy with my company and everybody else is yeah. screwed or whatever. But what this is saying is creating that legacy with the community for the community, for the greater and higher good. What is that face? You are not going to believe what this says inside the rest of it. Okay. I just want, I want proof. So I'm going to show it up to the screen. So okay, everyone can, sure. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just so you know that I have it open to the 10 of pentacles in the actual okay. book and in the middle, italicized, there's a few words in here that are italicized and it says, remember that perceptions change. <laughs> okay. Y'all just so you know, we accidentally ended this episode without doing this reading for the collective. So we had to come back on and I started shuffling the cards. <laughs> I have not seen the cards. She, she not... actually admitted that she doesn't really do well with regular tarot. So she was going to have to use the book Thank to you. reference. Like what? <laughs> this is the first time we're seeing them as well, guys. Like <laughs> You are one small move away from seeing the bigger picture and from unearthing a legacy of pinnacles that is already yours. I love that. Removing the veil. <laughs> yes. Well, Changing our perceptions <laughs> because we're removing the veil. Like when you wear like what rose colored glasses, you see the colors not as they are without the glasses. So just right. changing that perspective and seeing this, I holding on a, on a pedestal, I don't know, like this goal of creating this unification, this legacy of love that is pervasive. Like I want love to be contagious. Right. And remember what Mountain Glass said about what you're focusing on when you're scrolling through your technologies. I want you to hold on to that thought process of what they said during that time when I give you your next card. And I do this. <laughs> I do this. I actually search. So a lot of times I'm on my news app, but I'm not reading the news. Like I'll see a headline and I'm like, okay, that's fine. You're like, oh, that sucks. Yeah. But then I'm like, oh, funny thing on Reddit or oh, funniest memes of 2022 or whatever. Yeah. And I want to laugh and feel joy. And I've even gone as far as looking up good news. Has anybody else Google search good news? You ever or just be in a really bad mood? And so you make a decision to just jump on TikTok and look at nothing but funny TikToks over mm -hmm. and over again. And you start to laugh and you start to shift your mood. Yeah. Versus I want to watch a movie that makes me cry. Not to say that's bad. Sometimes you need that release, but you know, what are you choosing for yourself? Right. So speaking of polarity, nine of swords. Okay. This is a really beautiful card. So the background right. is like blues and greens. It looks like it's nighttime and the images at the top, it looks like a bunch of blackbirds flapping around. They are not in any particular order. There is actually one white bird or angel that is kind of off in the corner behind all the rest of the birds. And down on the ground, there's a young woman weeping into her hands and she's in a bright red dress with a pillow sitting next to her on the ground. I, I, I'm getting kind of like, hold on, before you read, like, what do you get from that? Like, what is the feeling that you get from that? First of all, I feel now I'm taking this into consideration that I'm seeing all three of these cards on my desk right now. Okay. And so I see almost like a story that it's creating, right? Okay. So often times that we forget we're in a very, well, maybe we don't forget. We just don't focus on the thought process that we're purposefully in a polarized place to experience all of these things, right? So whether you have the experience of the playful activities, the love, the perception changes of what's going on around you, and whether you're focused on things that make you feel sad. So I'll read from the book right now. Hold on. To insert this. I want to give you mine. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> but you said something before about this card. I, I have more on the second one though. Portrays the third card that I'm not showing you I, yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this second card, I agree that this card, if you look at it surface level, it there's these feelings of darkness and despair. But something that I almost didn't notice was that white image of a white bird that almost looks a little translucent at the top. So this image, yes. Thank yeah. you for showing that again. And I don't know if you can tell, but this is a bed. No, I couldn't tell. I could not tell. Yeah. I see like a little light bed in the grass. Mm -hmm. Okay. So her pain and her sorrow, it feels like all consuming. And she's so focused on this fear or this lack of love and she's crying in her hands and it's like she can't see the love that is there waiting for her and even though when she looks up she sees all these black birds this sign of some people can say it's of death some people can say it's of chaos or destruction or whatever these black birds Represent. symbolize yeah. to you and it's so easy to get caught up in almost the immediate perception that you forget to see that other side or what's beyond that, that love that is waiting for you to receive it. Yep. What's to it the say? Book. Okay. Now you can. Nightmares, <laughs> worry, feelings of depression or anxiety, insomnia, fear, an opportunity to find courage a time to focus on safety and the things that are going well in your life. Are you imagining the worst instead of activating the best? What is the story you're telling yourself? You what are like you focusing to expose on? the illusions. It says that in the book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. Oh my God. It says up at the top perception is everything. <laughs> I'm not kidding y'all. I'm not kidding. Okay. I just what yelled on the, the microphone. Sorry for that. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is a really authentic episode. <laughs> right? Would you like to see what we do behind the scenes? And we're just chit-chatting. Welcome. <laughs> wow. God. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> I mean, for those of you that don't believe, just play. Just play with it. Just play with it. You and just not make this be up. Be open to being wowed. So two of cups is the last card. <laughs> Okay. 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 So again, hold that up just a little bit higher, man. Hold, hold on. I gotta, I gotta get my bookmarks before I lose that page. There we go. Okay. I'm trying to get this so, camera to focus on the card. Two of cups. We have two arms reaching down hands interlacing. Each one is different skin tone. And from each of the fingers, there is rainbows of, I don't know, light of water pouring out from them when they embrace each other. And they're filling up their cups. They're filling up their cups. When we come together and unify in love, we fill each other's cups. The love that we need is like reproduce like rabbits when we come together and <laughs> <laughs> shit. <laughs> I don't even know if we're going to cut that part out just so we're clear no <laughs> <laughs> oh like my there's gosh. just this abundance of overflowing love there yeah. is not no one needs because mm -hmm. they're like they're giving and when we give we are creating more love even to receive so when we love others we do so not because we're asking for anything in return. Yeah. Romantic partners from the book, by the way, romantic partners, soulmates, friendships, connected hearts, passion, kindred spirits, joyful connection and cooperation, union, sometimes marriage, duality, love, consciousness. When you share your joy with those around you, you will attract deep and meaningful ties with others. Again, this whole story that you've laid out in front of us is this idea of unity beyond the illusion of separation. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, stick a fork in me. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're going to say our ending one more time. <laughs> this discussion 
has been a really fun one for me. Agreed. Um, and I, I just feel like the the guides per the huge <laughs> continue to support with these tools and modalities that we have that are tangible. You know, I mentioned earlier that Shira and I, we get these intuitive hits, these shared thoughts constantly throughout the day when we don't speak to each other. Mm-hmm. And so it is just such a cool thing to witness. Yeah. It is. And this helps support me and my faith that we are all one. So agreed. I hope everyone ponders upon the information that's been shared with us today. I, I feel like this was a very fun conversation as well and pretty enlightening just to hear it from Mount Glass's perspective mm-hmm. as well. Whether you want to believe that that's a higher perspective or not, mm-hmm. I believe that we're all there. We just all forgot. It's funny that we call it a higher perspective. Like we have to class it. And it's humans. I know. <laughs> we're all... It's people will argue with this, but we're all (laughs) equals. (laughs) We are most certainly all equals. We are, we, we are all sharing in a likeness of the fact that we are operating out of the most intelligent mechanism on this planet. And that is us, our human. Wait, we're all earth. I would argue that that's the most intelligent. We're also all living on a planet <laughs> together. We share yeah. the ground and the air. And the water. And the water. <laughs> and the fire that keeps us warm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is so cool. Thanks, Shy. <laughs> You're welcome. And audience, thank you for being here again. Just wanted to share a little uh, milestone. We've hit 3,000 listens. So to do that in... 18 months is such a cool thing. So this is just listens on podcast downloads. So not even YouTube. So I just think this is phenomenal that we've been able to share our message and messages. That's cool. People have been open to receiving the messages that of Mount glass that we are sharing. It's so cool. Cause this is all Mount glass. So grateful, Mm -hmm. extremely grateful. Sometimes I'm still in shock. I actually share that with Carrie all the time, like where I'll get something, right? Whether that's the intuitive hit or the synchronistic moments or the, what do you, what'd you call it earlier? Where's the premonitions, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? And I still say it all the time. Like, what? Like, (laughs) Like, can you believe it? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can. (laughs) Which makes it even more fun, right? That's magical. It is magic anyway. Thanks all righty guys. Here. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> we hope you have a wonderful day and happy 2023. Again, if you have any comments, suggestions, any insights, thoughts, perspectives, we'd love to hear from you. You can leave a comment on any of the tubes or the podcast would be <laughs> Apple for review. And so, yes, if you have any comments, come to our socials, either Instagram or on Facebook. And we just want to remind you to love first, love last, and love always. Bye, Bye everybody. Hey, listener. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us in this moment. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and we look forward to our next connection. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow to stay notified of new content from Love Always Self. If you have any questions or topics you'd like for us to discuss, please hit us up on any of our social media platforms linked in the show notes below. I'm Karista. And I'm Shira. And until next time, remember to love first, love last, and love always. Love Always Self podcast is meant for entertainment purposes only. We do not make any warranties about the completeness, reliability, and accuracy of the information presented in this podcast. Any action you choose to take upon the information in this podcast is strictly done so at your own risk, and we will not be held liable for any losses and damages in connection with the use of our podcast. Any and all medical concerns should be addressed with a licensed healthcare provider, as well as any questions that may be derived from the information discussed in this podcast.